Uh, so like I said, I'm so sorry if your name is Diamond and you're not a stripper. In my mother's head, you are. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my October TBR for 2021. If you are new to my channel then you do not know this, but my mom always picks my TBR and she always has a fun little theme on why she picked the book. So you would expect her to pick like spooky books because it's the month of October and that's what everybody does, but no, she chose what's in a name and that will make more sense when you see the book. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book she chose is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. She chose this because of Evelyn. I am actually really excited about this book because everybody and their mother has read this book, everybody and their mother has loved this book, and I have just been putting it off for the longest time because I am so scared that I am not going to enjoy it and I'm going to be the only person on booktube who doesn't enjoy it and then I'm going to be crucified, which I would not actually be crucified, but that's what it feels like. Fingers crossed I like this book. If I don't, I'm so sorry to everybody on booktube. I have a feeling that I will like it, but you know, you never know. I did let my friend Nicole borrow this and she loved it, so we usually have pretty similar tastes, so hopefully, hopefully. Next up, uh, she chose this book because uh, it is a stripper name, so if anybody is named this and is not a stripper, I'm so sorry, but this is the way my mother's brain works. She chose Diamond City by Francesca Flores because diamond. Uh, so like I said, I'm so sorry if your name is diamond and you're not a stripper. In my mother's head, you are. I'm going to read the back of the book on this because I think it sounds really cool, but it says, meet Aina Solis, whose wit is as sharp as her blade. 18-year-old Aina is a professional assassin with a bounty on her head in an industrial wasteland full of half-constructed subway tunnels, blood magic, secret markets, and wolf-sized spiders. Only one girl holds the power to change her city forever. I am just drawn in by the wolf-sized spiders. I don't know if I'm intrigued or terrified on that part because like it would be kind of cool to have like a pet spider that's as big as a wolf as long as they're not gonna bite and hurt. Like, can you ride the spider? That's what I would like to know. But I am intrigued. And also blood magic is always super cool, so I'm here for it. Next, I have Jane Unlimited by Kristen Kishore. I love Kristen Kishore because Kristen Kishore wrote The Graceling. I've heard very mixed things about this book because everybody had such high expectations for it because of Graceling. It's about a girl named Jane who gets invited to this manor that can change her life forever. She's given five different options of how she can change her life and it's like the story of that. I am intrigued and also probably have too high of expectations like everybody else because of the Graceling, but I'm gonna hope that I really like this. I do have it on audiobook, so I'm hoping to listen to it very soon. Also, I just really love how shiny the cover is, so I don't want it to be bad because I'm gonna be really sad if I'm gonna have to get rid of the shiny cover. Next up is a book that everybody has read already and I'm late, late, late to the party. It is Dear Martin by Nick Stone. I'm not gonna explain why anymore because it's obvious what name is a name in these books. I, I'm not doing it anymore. This follows a boy named Martin who is top of his class, very respected, until he is arrested one day for riding in the passenger seat of his friend's car with music blasting and he turns to the workings of Martin Luther King Jr. to try to figure out like why this injustice is happening. This is Nick Stone's debut novel which I am very intrigued with because I read Odd One Out and I believe I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So I did enjoy it, but this is one that everybody gave like 5 out of 5 stars, so I'm hoping that I love it. The next book I have is Killing Kate. This is by Alex Lake, and this is the only thriller that my mother put on this list, which is upsetting because thrillers are my shit. Thrillers are so obvious in October, so she tried to stay away from the thrillers, but this follows a girl named Kate who just got back from breaking up with her boyfriend, and that is when a serial killer begins on the loose in her hometown and all of his victims seem to look a lot like her. So she starts thinking that maybe it's her ex-boyfriend who is trying to finish her off, but she feels like she's being followed and it's like the story of that, her being paranoid. Who knows if it's true? I don't, but I hope a lot of people die, which sounds morbid, but that's why I read thriller books. 
Next up is Zach and Mia. This is by AJ Betts and this follows Zach who is a soccer playing farm boy and Mia who is like a very very popular girl. They would probably never cross paths but they end up crossing paths when they are both in the hospital for cancer treatment and they've been communicating with each other through the wall and then they are released into the wild again and it's them realizing that their differences in popularity and whatnot don't matter because they have a stronger bond because of their shared journey. And it's like the story of that. I saw a lot of people haul this when it first came out, but nobody's ever like reviewed it. So I am intrigued to see if it's actually like a good time or not. Not that like a story about cancer is going to be a good time, but like heartfelt, you know what I mean? But I'm intrigued, I'm excited, and I just like really like the contrasting colors. I don't know. I like this cover. Next up, Blood Rose Rebellion by Rosalind Eves. This is the beginning of a fantasy trilogy. Not really 100% sure what it's about because I tried to read the synopsis and all I really got was that there's a high society that this girl is born into but then she gets shipped off to Hungary and there's another society or like a dude there that like takes her in and she starts working for them and there's a rebellion. I don't really know. There's magic too, but I'm kind of confused. So I'm kind of going into this blind, but I'm not mad about it. I also have this one on audiobook, so that's probably what I'm going to listen to. I also own the second book. Do not own the third book in the trilogy, but I can at least, if I like this one, binge one and two. Let me know if you've read this book because I actually am very curious. This is another one that I saw a lot of people haul but never actually read. And then the final book that she picked out was OCD Daniel by Wesley King and this follows a boy who is a part of the high school football team. He's not actually on the team but he is the water boy and he spends most of his time at practice trying to make it not obvious that he has OCD. Then he receives a letter from a mystery person claiming that they are like him and that they need his help and it's like the story of that he gets sent on this big journey from this letter i don't know what i'm gonna think about this i think that it was one of those like i was shopping at value village and then i needed a fifth book to be free because it's like buy four get one free kind of thing and i didn't have any other books that i wanted so i just grabbed it because i knew it was young adult or middle grader like my genre at least do not know how we're gonna feel about this book but this is another one I have on audio, so it's gonna fly by. All right, everybody, so those were my mother's picks for my October TBR 2021. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!